Hey everybody, welcome to another AATRN talk. Today we have Yumin Chung, who will be talking to us about multi-parameter persistence and mathematical morphology. Thank you, Yumin. Thank you for the uh, invitation and thank you for your introduction. So today I'm going to talk about uh, this uh, multi-parameter persistence and uh, some mathematical morphology. So, let's see. All right. So basically this work will be uh, based on uh, the paper uh, that's recently published uh, here. Uh, this is a joint work with my uh, longtime collaborator, Sarah Day. Uh, she is a college of William Mary and my former PhD student, uh, Chen Sen Hu, and he is uh, a postdoc at uh, NTU uh, Singapore. Okay, so here's a very brief outline of uh, this paper and this talk. So I will just give you some motivation and then maybe just give you an introduction to the mathematical morphology. And I will show you some uh, new filtration based on the uh, ma mathematical morphology. And then the main result, I will show you this multi-parameter filtration uh, framework in the Im digital image uh, case. And lastly, I will show you uh, one application of this multi-parameter filtration that is denoising algorithm. Okay. So for this audience, uh, let me just move on. Uh, we are interested in the Betty numbers, in particular, uh, you know, zero-dimensional hole, one-dimensional hole, two-dimensional hole, and so on. And in my work, uh, we focus on mostly the image. Okay. So uh, in particular, I just want to set up some uh, background knowledge uh, notation so we have the same language. So here I'm always looking for the shape of the black set. Right? So black is the color I'm looking for. So if you were to count the Betty number for this object, that would be two. If you were to count the Betty number for the letter B, that would be one, two. So I'm focusing on the, the black set. Okay. All right. So this is a little bit more complicated example. Uh, this is taken from the uh, computational homology textbook. But again, I want to uh, emphasize I'm looking for the shape of the black set. So when I calculate the Betty number, this is what I mean by um, the shape of the black set. Okay, so, uh, okay, good. So I can quickly maybe just remind everybody what the Betty number in this context means. So this Y region here that will count it as a beta zero, a beta one, excuse me, another one here. And those are on the boundary. So typically those, those Y region wouldn't be counted as beta one. And what are the beta, you know, zero? Those are the, you know, uh, disconnected component of the black region as one here, another one here, and everything else is in the middle, right? So translate that to non-TDA people, you know, zero dimensional, hole, you can really just think about the isolated black regions and one dimensional hole, you can think about the white region that is completely enclosed by the black region. That's uh, the, the, my explanation to non-TDA community, but for us, really we are focusing on the shape of the black set. Okay, so that's the background. Um, and filtration, we all know very well. So as long as we have a filtration and we can build a, a persistent homology, right? So building this uh, increasing uh, set is gonna be the, the main topic. And in the image processing in particular, uh, we, the, the sub-level set is one of the most common uh, filtration, right? So what is the sub-level set? You, you treat the image as a function. So in this case, this is a grayscale image. This is an 8-bit grayscale image. Uh, this is uh, uh, treated this as a function. So the grayscale pixel value ranges from zero to 255. So now you will actually see this uh, image as a function, okay? And the sub-level set is you pick a threshold. Everything below that threshold is black. Everything beyond that threshold is white. And then as you keep increasing that threshold, you will have a different binary images. And so in the image processing community, people call this a threshold decomposition. And so given the 8-bit grayscale image, you're gonna have a 256 uh, binary image. Right? So here is one, one example. At threshold at 50, you have this binary image. Threshold at 75, you have this image. Threshold at 100, you have this binary image, and so on and so forth. And uh, precision homology, you know, the, the important thing is 
this is a very simple uh, calculus fact. You can verify uh, this is actually a subset of the, they follow the subset relation and therefore the filtration. So we can then apply the same homology to study uh, how the uh, beta zero and beta one uh, changes. Okay. So that's the sublevel set filtration is very commonly used in uh, digital images. Okay, and here is a very quick recap of the persistent diagram. So I think I would I can fairly save to um, move it quickly. So here's a very simple example of the sub-level sub set filtration and its persistent diagram. Right? So if I have a very simple three by three um, images, and if you go through the sub-level set filtration, and this is what the uh, persistent diagram you will get. Right? So this is a big, a first zero level persistent diagram. This is a first level persistent diagram. Uh, you have a one uh, generated isoform at three and die at 10. Okay? So that's a, a sub-level set filtration. Uh, go through this entire process and this is a persistent diagram, okay? Good. All right. And then this is really intuitive intuition for at least when we teach students how you make sense of the persistent diagram, right? We usually ask them to look for, uh, you know, the long life generator. So if I look at this square scale image, I can, my mind may tell me, oh, they are seem to have this white region, another white region. I have an, another, another white region. Those are eight um, one dimensional hole, right? So if you see it from your persistent diagram, the first level persistent diagram, you can count the long life generator. Those are, Eight. Those are exactly eight, right? So, so that's how we make sense of the persistent diagram, or how we teach the students the long life generator is the robust feature in your image or in your space. Okay. All right. So, but there is a caveat, right? So let me stop here, give you some uh, mind prep exercise, right? So imagine I have those two. Um, uh, persistent diagram, I want you to imagine what the image uh, comes from, right? What image will produce those two persistent diagrams, right? Given this conception, we think about long life is a robust feature and in our mind, it's, it's like visually large. So maybe you may think about the image some, be something like this, okay? But in reality, the answer is no, the actual image will be like this. Okay, because uh, you can think, you can see that this image is swamped by the salt and pepper noise. And those small dots, uh, because of the sub-level set, it will contribute to, you know, the long life generator there, right? So, so really the robust feature in the sub-level set really is not visually large, right? So this is a very important caveat, at least in the sub-level set, uh, low life generator doesn't translate to a large feature in um, in, in, your, in our mind, in, in the image. It doesn't translate to the size. So that's why, you know, sublevels say have this limitation. Uh, if you want to know the size of your uh, images or size of the object of the interest, sublevels say will lose that information. You don't know that, okay? So that's why it is very important that people like to incorporate the geometric information into the uh, filtration. That will be uh, ideal, okay? So that's why we introduced, now, now we introduced, we found this tool called the Mathematical Morphology. And this is the tool, it's a classic tool in image processing. So if you read any image processing textbook, there is always a chapter talking about Mathematical Morphology. And here is uh, one textbook that is one text. Can, can you see my cursor? Just curious. Yes, okay. Yeah, here is one of the uh, classic textbook specifically for mathematical morphology. So it is a very interesting uh, or beautiful mathematics, at least in my mind. It, everything comes down to a set theory, uh, more working with the set theory, and they have a really beautiful. Uh, operation and the theory. Okay, so, but for now, let me just give you a very quick, uh, maybe just five slides of what mathematical morphology is. 
So mathematical morphology, the basic components are the operations. Right? So the basic idea is the operation. You think about the image as a function. So mathematical morphology is a lot of operation that takes in an image and outputs another image. In particular, this is a binary image, but it can later generate to grayscale. That's no problem, but that's just make our mind easier. Just think about everything as binary image. The operation, mathematical, uh, morpholo morphological operation, texting and binary image outputs another binary image. Okay, so how does that work? So two basic operations called erosion and dilation. Everything comes down to erosion and dilation and built upon those two very basic operations. So what is this? You can think about this as a convolution, right? Just over the moving window, just like the typical uh, image processing world, you have a moving window. If you want to do a you know, moving average or the, the convolution, right? exactly the same idea. But there you have a moving window and here this moving window is B and in this world, this is called a structuring element. So instead of the window, typically think about window as a rectangular, you can actually have a very bizarre shape. Right? But here we can just focus on window. And then for each window, and then you, instead of doing the you know, average sum or the weighted sum, here they are taking the minimum or the maximum. Okay, so that's uh, a nonlinear. So uh, some of the community will call this a nonlinear uh, convolutional uh, filter, but this is just really changing that to a minimum operator, maximum operator, and here you have the window, it's called a structuring element, and you can change the structuring element to instead of square to some uh, bizarre shape, okay? Good, so that's a basic of the erosion and dilation. So let me just show you the, the, those operations in action. I just give you one example, right? So if you look at, excuse me, if you look at the definition, right? So erosion just take the minimum, right? So the binary image is either zero or one. So when you take the minimum, you're gonna have more zero. So you will make, uh, make the image darker. And dilation on the other hand, you are taking the maximum. So you are going to take a more uh, one. So you will make the image whiter. That's, that's on a very high level what, what this look like. So here is one example, right? So this is a binary image as an input. After erosion, you get another binary image, okay? So in this case, you can see the white region shrink, right? So another thing is you remove a small dot uh, white pixel, and at the same time, you shrink the main structure, right? So the main structure become uh, thinner. On the other hand, uh, if you do a dilation on the image, this is the input binary image, and you dilate the image, the white space become uh, larger. So in this case, you will, eliminate the black dot and at the same time your white region become fattened so you another another way people will say this is a thinner and this is a fatter okay okay and then the third remark i want to make is you know and now the parameter is really the structuring element so if i prescribe a different structuring element i really have a different operation you will have a different um uh, effect on the, your image. Right? So here, this erosion is based on a uh, three by three square, which is a square, just a normal uh, window, if you may. But you can also do something like uh, a cross with a digital circle or something like this rectangular, right? So you can do a lot of different shapes. But for now, we just focus on square. Let's make our life a little easier to uh, explain things. Okay, Yumin, can I ask a quick question? Yes, of course. If you go back one slide, yeah. there is a sort of, um, sort of, up. in the erosion, you add the structure element and the dilation, you subtract it. Is there an intuitive reason why this, should, this shouldn't be symmetric? Right, so um, this is just the way uh, they define things, right? So this structure and element B here, you know, this is really just a shift. Right, so this is a plus, so it's a normal way, and minus your structuring element will, will flip. So if your structuring element is symmetric, so those two will be the same. Okay. 
Okay, but this is really just the matter of flavor. So if you look at a textbook, some textbook will define as plus, some plus, some textbook will define as a minus. So it's really a personal test. So I don't think really unify that. Yeah. And are the results that are going to follow, do they depend on having the sign fixed one way or the other? Uh, right, so then you, then you have to make so again, this sign here, really just the location. It's not really, you know, positive or negative, just the location of the, mm. the, the uh, yeah, this just place the location of the uh, grid. Mm. Yes, yes. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. So the next thing I want to say, is uh, those erosion and dilation operations. So now you see erosion really just thinning your object and you also remove the small dots and the dilation just makes things fatter. And that's not uh, satisfying, right? Because you are somehow ruining this structure. So in this field, you know, what you do is you apply the opposite operation, right? So if I dilate this image, right? So this image will look better. Right? So on the other hand, this is too fat, so I'm going to thin it so I can apply the erosion to make this image look better. Right? So that's exactly uh, called the, uh, the, the new operation. So if you combine those two operations, if you apply erosion followed by a dilation or erosion, you first erode and then dilate, and this is called the opening operation. And on the other hand, if I dilate the image and I erode the image after that, I will get something called a closing operation. And clearly it is, those two operations are not commute. Right? So it's a make things very interesting. Uh, and opening and closing are very, very common filter, uh, not common filter, the, the morphological filters, right? So they have a formal way to define what morphological filter, but here really just means that opening and closing will make your image look nicer, will smooth your image and make your image look nicer. Excuse me. Okay, all right. So, so that's two operations. That's what we are going to uh, talk about, the opening and the closing operation. All right, so now that's enough of the background information. I'm going to talk about the new filtration that we uh, introduce and propose. Like we mentioned earlier, you know, uh, applying different uh, parameters, different uh, structuring element. In this case, our parameter is the structuring element. So in everything follow, we are going to use the square just to make our life easier. I'm going to have one by one square, two by two square, three by three square, four by four square, five by five squares, and so on and so forth. And if you think about one by one square, that's really does nothing, but right? just the original image does nothing. So now you can see that this is the opening operation. This is the original image. I apply two by two opening, four by four opening, six by six opening, and so on. So you will see that, you know, if you apply too much or, or the square, you apply too much opening, everything will become black. So you remove everything you possibly can. All right, so now this looks like a filtration, right? So it looks like the image become darker and darker. So we really hope this is the case, right? So now the question is, now this is the parameter, right? So now our parameter is the structure and element. So we wanna ask, do we have this same relation? If I have a subset of the structure and element, do I preserve under the opening operation, do I preserve the subset relation? Okay. The short answer is a no, right? So if this is a quick uh, counter example, if you work out this in detail, you will find out this is not going to be, this is a subset, B1 is a subset of B2, but this image is not a subset of uh, the next one. Okay, so this is a very quick uh, counter example that my student came up with. What is the problem here? Right? The problem is the structure and element, right? So uh, if, if we recall, so if I, re I may, I'm just move a little bit earlier. 
if you recall the definition of erosion and dilation, right? So it defined as the minimum value and the maximum value. So when you do the opening and you want to have the same um, subset relation, it really comes down to you know, this relation here. So if you do uh, erosion followed by dilation, so you need to work out the detail how this set will uh, perform or how the set will be uh, interact in, in this case. So it becomes like mini, minimum value and maximum value. And you have to worry about a lot of the uh, pixel, the location of the pixel, make sure those things are aligned. So long story short, uh, in order to have the filtration, uh, the structuring element needs to be nice, right? So when you grow the structuring element, you cannot grow in a very bizarre or random way. You need to grow in a systematic way. And so that way we call the shift inclusion and I will save another time. But for now, we just want to make sure, you know, uh, keep this in mind. When you grow the structuring element, you have to grow in, 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 in a nice way. And a typical example will work. So that's, that's no worry. So be, be, uh, be, be, be happy, right? Everything, the, the normal one, so like the squares. So if you grow the squares or if you grow the cross, those, those the typical one will work, right? So, so the squares one by one, two by three, three by three, four by four, those squares will work in, in falls under our, uh, our, our condition. So that was part is fine. So good. And we can move on. So answer that previous slide. In this case, if we use the squares, the growing squares, structure and elements, then we do have an opening filtration. Okay. So now this subset relation does follow. Okay. Now, now we have a subset, level, not subset level, now we have a filtration, then we can compute the per persistent diagram. Right, so now we can compute the persistent diagram. This is particularly the first level persistent diagram. Okay, and uh, we can take a look maybe for two seconds, but I want you to focus on, um, on maybe the, the, this line here. Right? You, did you notice that there is a generator that born at zero and they have a different death value? That same very similar to the Ribs complex filtration, right? So if you have a 20 points at the original, your beta zero will have 20 points at the, um, you know, the death, the, the, the y axis, right? So that's exactly what it's, it's going to be, right? So at the original, this is original image, there are that many uh, one dimensional uh, generator, the first dimensional generator that is born at the first, the original image, okay? And what does the death value tell you? Well, the death value in this case is actually the size of that, that, that generator, okay? So for instance, let me see if I can spot something. For instance, if you look at, if you look at this very small white dot right here, you see it right here, very small white dot, that's form at zero or, or one at the first place, original. After one step of opening, it disappeared, right? So that, this, that will be translated to the death value of two, right? So born at one and die at two, okay? And similarly, those generator will, you know, those are born at the same time, but it will die at four. So really in this Y axis, right? So the, the, the death information actually tell you the size of your, uh, of your hole, of your one dimensional holes. Okay, so really this opening filtration in, in addition to the topological information really encode the geometric information here. So that's the previous example we see. The long life generator is a robust feature. The robust feature doesn't necessarily translate to the large size in feature, but in this context, in the opening filtration, it does. A life, long life generator is really a large in size feature. Okay. Let's move on. And in the paper, uh, there are a lot of different uh, operations that you can uh, just follow. So the variant of this operation, you can have a new filtration. This is the opening filtration, and this is the closing filtration. And you notice the closing 
the, the subset relation switch, right? because the, when you do the opening, your image tend to become larger. The white region become more, so you switch that. And there are some, something called the white top hat operation, which is defined like this. And you have a black top hat and you have this, uh, this is a classical uh, operation in mathematical morphology. And now because of the opening filtration, closing filtration, you also have this filtration just get it for free. All right, so now we have this new filtration and I'm going to move on to talk about my uh, main uh, another main result is multi-parameter filtration framework. So um, I'm going to combine the sub-level set and opening and closing, and then alternating opening and closing, we will get the multi-parameter filtration. What do I mean by this? So let me show you one example. We have known that the sub-level set give you the filtration, right? So this is the the, 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 the threshold value 10, 50, 90, 30, so you gotta get this filtration, okay? And for each binary image, I also have an opening filtration and closing filtration, right? So this is opening filtration and this is a closing filtration, right? So for each binary image, I have this vertical filtration for, for the horizontal, I have the grayscale filtration. And Combine both, they actually have a bifiltration. So you combine both, you know, this is a threshold information and this is the opening closing filtration. So now you have a bifiltration, okay? Another example, uh, this is the example that we did with my, again, my former students uh, in my collaborator, Caitlin. So this is a distant transform. Distant transform is a, another typical way people use in, in, in in TDA field, uh, we also proved that if you can combine with the threshold and the uh, distance transform uh, threshold, you now have another bifiltration. Okay. So that's, that's not in our, this paper, that's a different work, but I just thought we can include this. Okay, and the next one I want to mention is, is alternating closing and the operation, uh, alternating opening and closing. So now imagine I have just a binary image, I just just a binary image for now. I can do, um, for each binary image, I can do an opening just like before. For each binary image, I have a closing operation just like before. So now I can alternate that. Right? So for each this guy, I can also apply the closing. For each this guy will also have a closing. Right? So the big question is, does this have the uh, bifiltration uh, property, right? So we need to prove this. So, <clears throat> so here is the really, really interesting fun part, right? So you can do, uh, alter this is in this field called the alternating opening and closing. So you can do closing followed by another opening, right? So that's, it's called alternating. And uh, in practice, this will make your image even nicer, right? So, okay. And in the field, they, there is actually, you can do the sequence. Right? You can actually do closing, followed by opening, followed by closing, followed by opening, and so on and so forth. And, or you can do the other way around. You can do opening, closing, opening, closing. So you just do it in this fashion. This is a commonly known in the mathematical morphology field. But in our field, it's very natural to have a multi-parameter filtration, right? So, you know, Whenever you do a one additional uh, opening operation, you get additional parameter. And under some condition, you're gonna have naturally built a multi-parameter filtration. So here is some little details. Now. That's the only uh, detail in this talk I just go through. So here is the assumption. Okay, so we assume that we have a sequence of the operation. Uh, this is this script. I and the script D, uh, you can think about the script I is like a erosion-like operation. Right? So erosion opening, right? So erosion-like operation. And this D is like a dilation-like operation. And this I here, and we, we, we just set everything in the same manner. Everything is now a growing square. So this I correspond to the, the size of your square, one by one square, two by two square, three by three square, and so on. 
So the first condition, you need to have an increase in profit. <coughs> Excuse me, increase in profit, right? So uh, this is a little overlook if you don't look carefully, but this is assumption is when you have F is a fun, is a image and G is another image, right? It's saying that if this image is a subset of the next image, that will tell you that this uh, erosion, the same erosion, excuse me, the same erosion will preserve the subset relation, right? This is called the increasing property. And this another property is called the absorbing property. It's like the, the image is the same, but the, the structuring element are not the same. So if I increase the structuring element on the same image, do I have the uh, similar subset relation? That's called the absorbing property. And we also say that this uh, at zero, everything will be at the original, okay? And the similar concept appear in mathematical morphology that's called the gran granulometry. And so they will also have a very similar assumption there. And so, so really, we're really excited because not, it's, it's not like we are inventing a new thing. Right? We're finding this existing uh, work that really just a natural way to build uh, multi-parameter filtration. Okay, so uh, just another couple more notation. So now we can actually combine those two operations with this just a M. Uh, and then this, this index can just be a negative to positive, a negative being a, 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 a closing operation and positive being an op op opening operation, something like that. So now I have this uh, one notation that will take two operators all at once. And I'm interested in the sublevel set, interested in the black set. And then I can also interested in the alternating series. Right? So this is, um, I can do this opening, closing, opening, and closing. Right? So I have a whole bunch of different type of operation. I can also define their sublevel set. So under this condition, right? So if you do this opening, closing, opening, closing, you do actually get a K parameter filtration. Right? If you do K times, you're gonna have a K parameter filtration. If you do more, then you have more. And last result, um, connect back to the grayscale image. But this result is just for the binary image. Right? So now everything we talk about binary image, but in reality, we have the grayscale image. Right? So we only need to impose additional condition and that is the threshold operation commute with your morphological operation. If that's the case, then you have the following corollary. So if you incorporate the threshold into your alternating uh, opening closing operation, you now have a K plus one parameter uh, filtration. Okay. So that's, a, um, that's really, really uh, exciting. I think when we found it, this is really cool. Uh, not only we have this, a natural uh, example, concrete example, and then we offer this example for for our community. To you know, we have a lot of amazing theory, multi-parameter theory. So now we have a concrete example that we can, uh, or additional set of concrete example that we can. Okay, <clears throat> so I have a couple minutes, so I'm going to show you uh, one of the uh, results. Okay. So now we have built this really big parameter, multi-parameter filtration, right? So how do we use it? Right? So it turns out it's a very difficult, challenging task. So we propose one way, but we understand there are a lot of different ways that we can do. So here uh, we just uh, demonstrate one possible way that use it. Okay, so we are going to use to denoise an image. In particular, we're going to denoise salt and pepper noise. As I remember, um, so this is the original image. Uh, this is uh, what the uh, noised image, if I add the salt and pepper noise into this image, this is a very ugly image, but using the algorithm we propose, you can you know, reduce, you know, make this image look nicer. So here is the uh, basic idea. So the idea of this, algorithm is to go through this very big parameter space. Keep in mind, uh, this filtration 
in this specific diagram, the lifespan actually corresponds to the size, okay? So the idea here is we try to remove, whenever we this iterative method, we try to remove the short-lived uh, features and then try, try to keep the long-lived features. So the basic idea is we're going to, uh, maybe this image, this will show maybe a little better. So the idea is we're going to uh, consider the, uh, Every layer, we just consider one parameter filtration, one, one parameter persistent diagram. I know this is not satisfying, but this is what we are doing now. For each layer, we consider the uh, one dimensional persistent diagram and then find out the, uh, uh, find out the, the, keep the long life generator and then remove the smallest one and then pick that and then move on from there. So say if I pick there, and from there, I create the opening filtration. I create the opening filtration, and then I select another one, and then I create another closing filtration, calculate the persistent diagram, select one, and then move on, and keep iterating that. So in this example, what we do is, you know, we first, uh, we do the closing, negative two refer to closing, followed by opening, followed by uh, closing, uh, opening, uh, so eventually we got this uh, image there. So uh, here is one of the results that we, uh, we, we want to show. So when the density is 0 0.1, the image look better. Uh, so when 0 0.7, uh, the algorithms start to struggle. You, won't, you, 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 you start to lose the main structure. You have something like this. And to compare, uh, here is some comparison with the other work. Okay, this is a comparison with the other work. Uh, the middle column, the second column, AMF, is called the adaptive medium filter. So this, uh, it's a very powerful tool specifically for southern pepper noise. And this is a non, I believe this is a nonlinear adaptive medium filter. So this is, you can think about this as an improved version of the second column. The third column is denoise image. Uh, so the denoise image is general purpose denoise algorithm uh, that is built in in MATLAB. Okay, so that's not specific for uh, southern pepper noise. And this column is our algorithm. And the final column, CNN with median layer that is considered the state of art to deal with salt and pepper noise, okay? So we can see that our method, uh, you know, looks better, you know, compared to other methods here. And it's uh, not look better than the, the state of art, right? So state of art has a really powerful, uh, algorithm, right? So when, even in the 0 0.7 density, you can still recover a very good uh, images. Okay. All right. So here is a couple more comparison. So using this example, I'm going to run, you know, just one image. Here. I can run this, create a, a thousand different images, a thousand trials. So, and then I just calculate everything. Uh, this is the the, the, the result. So one result we're gonna show you, this is a beta zero plot, All right? So one thing I, we wanna show is, you know, how, whether you recover the, the, the Bailey number of your original uh, binary image, right? So, so this is the, the truth. So no matter the, the X axis is the noise density, right? So the higher you get, the more noise it, your image will be so more difficult for the algorithm to 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 success. And this is called uh, excuse me. All right, so this is the beta zero information. And so that's the, the the truth. So you can see that the blue is the state of R, so very close to you know the middle line. So that means that their performance is really good, even even for a very high density noise, you can still you know, preserve a really good um, images. 
And our algorithm is de depicted in a red color. So again, it's very close to the middle. Whereas the others, uh, this method and AMF, uh, those two are not um, performing really well. And this is as a comparison, this is the pure noise. This is the uh, green is just a pure noise. This is just how bad you can get. Right? So that's the worst case. And this line here is the best in the, the, the truth. The similarly, we can see that you know, the, the, the blue and the red, we are you know, very comparable in terms of the baby number counts. We are doing fairly well. And here, uh, this is the IOU intersection over the union. Right, so that's a typical metric to compare uh, two images. Okay. Just yeah, because this is now a binary image, so you can do this. So now you can see that the blue is the state of R, so their result looks really good. So IOU means uh, the more the higher value, the one being the perfect. Okay, so 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 close to one is the better. Right? So this is the best line here, and our method is just follow a little behind there. And keep in mind, this the state of our method CNN with median layers. It is a trained model, so it's based on the training. It's a supervised method, and our method is, you know, un unsupervised method. It is just uh, running couple of persistent diagram and then just 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 do it. So we don't have any training sample, just based on the unsupervised uh, fashion. So one last thing, I just want to show that this our algorithm shine in these places, right? So if we instead consider the large salt and pepper noise, right? So you can see that uh, previous salt and pepper noise is just uh, one pixel, but now we can throw in, you know, a different size of the, the, the affected region. So we call this salt, large salt and pepper noise. And this is what the state of our result will give you. If you run the CNN with median layers, uh, you can see that apparently the, the model hasn't learned the large salt and pepper. So they, the model just assume that this large size is the true feature and try to recover this as, as much as possible, right? Whereas our method, we are just taking the persistent that just running that unsupervised learning and our image looks um, a lot better than the the, the state of art method. Okay. Okay. So to summarize, right? So uh, this work really just introduced a new filtration based on the morphological operation. So really, we 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 hope we bridge this to field, right? The TDA and the morphological mathematical morphology. Those two fields together, and there are a lot of morphological operation that we can explore, and our TDA can help. I believe there are a lot of more opportunities there. And we also find that under this case, we naturally form a multi-parameter filtration. So this gives us a lot of example to work with. And <coughs> we demonstrate one algorithm, a denoising algorithm, just to utilize the multi-parameter filtration. But I'm sure there are a lot more uh, uh, methods or other type of uh, ways to extract information from the multi-parameter uh, persistent. And that's that that. That would be really exciting, and that's what we uh, work on. And I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Yumin. Okay, so before we go to questions, I'm going to ask everybody to please unmute yourself and applaud our speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so questions. I guess uh, Hassan, you want to take it away? Yeah. Can you hear me? Mm hmm. Uh, thank you very much. A very nice talk. So very two very quick questions. The first question is, uh, I see from the what's going uh, uh, and maybe I don't know something from the proof or not. This um, Is there any algebraic structure? Let's say we, we consider the space of uh, binary images of fixed size, then this uh, opening and closing as operation with this space, is there any algebraic structure? 
of any algebraic structure. So what do you yeah. mean by... So yeah. you have a space and two operators. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is an algebraic structure. Is there any work in this direction? Ah, okay. I think uh, I don't want to make a claim. Uh, I believe so, but I can refer you to a classic textbook. It was written by a, a French mathematician. Let me see if I can find it. It's a, written by a French mathematician. So this field is actually built by a mathematician. So everything is from the set theory. So I believe they, sh they may have some algebraic structure, but I, I, I'm not sure. And my second question is you, you define this opening and closing based on uh, erosion and then dilation. So if we use the idea of randomized, Mm -hmm. uh, have you think about that to randomly uh, use this erosion and dilation, but maybe with different parameters? Oh, okay. So just, when you uh, say randomize, just, uh, just an idea, a rough idea too. Okay. It's it should I think it's it should be interesting to consider that too. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking like uh, you randomize making yeah. the. The window randomly uh, a sequence of a sequence of random uh -huh. uh, dilation and uh, and uh, erosion. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Renee. Yes. Hello. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your talk. It's very exciting. I could ask a couple of questions, but I uh, try to also restrict to two only. So um, for, first of all, um, you, you, you said um, you might um, look, look at um, other things than only uh, going pathwise, right? Um, um, so, so do you have any idea about um, the shape of the multi-parameter persistence module of your multi-filtration? That's a really good question. I don't have a really good answer for it. So that's the... the, the the uh, area that I, I'm hoping to get into it. So I don't have a quick answer for you. I'm really hoping to learn more. So if you have suggestions, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, so, so there are some suggestions if the uh, uh, persistence module would look a little bit easier than uh, in, in full general, uh, it, it, it might look like. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so, so um, the second question is more on, on the uh, experimental side. So mm -hmm. I understand that um, you uh, use this technique for salt and pepper noises, mm -hmm. but what, what, if, um, what if you um, um, think about um, um, noise or, or, or features in your images that cannot really be uh, thought of as salt and pepper noises, but maybe part of the feature, maybe not, something in between, mm -hmm. right? Um, so does, does your, have you looked at experiments of your algorithm with that, or may, maybe that's uh, comparable to DTM filtrations or multi-cover by filtration approaches or subsampling or something like this? Do you, do you think it um, might be also a good idea to um, try your algorithm on such kind of images? I, I believe so, yeah. So, so yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, See if I can move. Yes, you're right. So, right. So, you know, um, this is designed just for the salt and pepper noise. But as you, as you, as you mentioned, if I, you know, increasing this large, right? If you keep increasing that at certain point, you know, the algorithm wouldn't able to distinguish, you know, what do you mean by the true structure? So there will be a fine line uh, there. So, 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 so yeah, so that's a really good question. So for, for this, that's why we just, you know, focusing on the salt and paper noise, you want to really have a, a different scale of your features. That's, that's, you can think about as our implicit assumption, right? So you have a two different uh, scale of the uh, filtration uh, features then this will work really well. And, and your second question will be to try something like a DTM. Yeah, I think that will be really interesting. I haven't thought about that. Maybe we can follow up on that. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Do we have any other questions for our speaker? And then maybe a request and then a question. So 
Yuman, could you show the slide again where it's just open or close in one direction and then the sub-level side filtration parameter yeah. in the other? Because this struck me as a very natural by filtration. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I really like this, uh, this by filtration here. Um, and then I have a question on, it's one of the next to multi-parameter filtration. So if you could go forward a slide or two. Um, yeah, this one. So, so here you said you, you opened along the top row. Is mm -hmm. that correct? And yeah. then from there you closed going down. Yeah. Um, so the, not the top left square, but the one in the second column in the second row, that yeah. was obtained by opening and closing. And, and that could actually be different than closing and then opening. Correct. Do I understand that correct? Yeah, that's okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. So gotcha. that's correct. So if you change your order, then you can have a different- Different, uh, different filtration. filtration. Okay. Thanks. I, I appreciate that. Um, I think in the- Yeah. In so the spirit of, oh, yeah. sorry. You can think about this as on a Z2 lattice, if you want. Think about this filtration on the Z2 lattice. Um, on the, what do you say? Second and the fourth quadrant, they will be just shrink down to opening or clo closing. Right? So if you do, if you do opening followed by opening, it's the same as doing the opening of the larger one. Right? Mm -hmm. so if you think about this Z2 lattice, the second quadrant and the uh, second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, second. No, first and third, that will be just shrink down to one parameter filtration, not just opening and closing. And then the, the, the second and the fourth will be a two different uh, by filtration. Yeah. Cool, thanks so much. No problem. Oh, I also have two questions if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is about the computational complexity of the algorithm that you present at the end of the, near the end of the talk. Yeah. So the computational complexity is, let me see. Uh, so it was just calculating a lot of persistent diagram, if you want to think about that way. So the worst case is you're gonna calculate the maximum number of persistent diagram, one dimensional persistent diagram. Yeah. I see, okay, that makes sense. And then the other question is, this is all the way from the beginning of the talk about the shift inclusion. Mm. Uh, is that an if and only if to have um, to have a uh, filtration, or that it's sufficient? That's a very good question. So I think my student will love you. So um, <laughs> that's that's actually a lot into it. Uh, the short answer is well, the answer is yes and no. Okay, so let me see if I can find this. Uh, so under this condition, uh, if, you, if you look at this image here, we are specifically restrict ourselves in the finite domain, correct? And so that's why I interest that list. So I don't have to worry about the boundary. If I go beyond, I just don't care. Just focus on what's within the finite domain. Right? So in that case, things are more complicated you need to impose a little bit more condition. Uh, that's what the shift inclusion, there are a lot of details that you need to fill in. So in that case, it's not, it's not even only if. But if you don't have the boundary, if you're working with freely Z2, Z2 lattice or Z3 lattice, whatever you want, so no boundary at all, then that is even only. Yes. Oh, very cool. I, and I guess the, um, uh, by extension, there is another sufficient condition later on for the, the multi-parameter filtration. Is something analogous true about an if and only if to get a multi-parameter filtration? Right, that's, yeah, that's a really good question. So, yes. So all the work here is really dependent on having an opening filtration, right? So, and then that's really having a shift inclusion. So, yeah. That's true. So as long as you have this opening filtration, so later on you will have the multi-parameter filtration. 
Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for our speaker? Okay, well, if not, uh, we can take any other questions afterwards. Thank you, Yumin. I'll end the recording here. Thank you.